Welcome back. Uh, continuing on our discussion about common source amplifiers with uh, diode connected loads. Um, uh, as I told you in the previous lecture, I would be um, uh, writing down lectures that will be useful before we start on one lecture. Uh, here, uh, it would be really useful if you know transconductance and um, also all of the CS amplifier lectures. They're short lectures, so um, I don't think it'll hurt to just watch them a few times, be thorough with them before we continue. Um, all right, so let's go ahead. Um, so we have a diode connected load here. Uh, the, the gate, when it's connected to VDD and even drain is connected to VDD, so they're shorted. Um, so what we're going to be doing in this lecture is we're going to be writing the gain equation in a few forms. Uh, we're going to analyze the gain equation and also we, we're going to plot the output characteristics of the circuit and see where that leads us. Okay, so uh, here we go. We know that the gain, AV that is, can be given by minus GM times RD for a normal common source amplifier circuit. And we did derive in the previous lecture that this RD changes to 1 over GM. All right, let's name these transistors. This is M2 and this is M1. Okay, so uh, this RD changes to minus GM, I mean, 1 over GM2 if, if you have a diode connected transistor. And if you're considering body effect, it changes to uh, 1 over GM2 plus GMB2. Okay, so that is our AV now. GM1 times this. Alright, so uh, again, as I told in the previous lecture, in this expression, the first term is the GM of the input transistor. Never forget that. Very important. And the RD is that of the load. Okay, no matter how many loads you have, all that will be the equivalent resistance offered by all those loads together. Okay, and no matter what kind of loads they are. Okay, so we know this now, right? Um, if 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 it's not um, if you're not able to recollect it, maybe go back to the previous lecture and come back here. Um, okay, so now what we'll do is write these in a few different forms. Uh, so A V equals minus G M one and uh, let's factor GM2 out of this place. So GM2 1 plus GMB2 over GM2. Okay. And so minus GM1 over GM2 times 1 over 1 plus. Now GMB2 over GM2 is the transconductance because of the body effect over the transconductance of the, of, the, of the device itself. Let's call it eta. Okay. It's just a ratio between the transconductances of the body effect and of the device itself. Okay. So that's how we can write the gain. It's no, it's no big a deal. Just We're just trying to simplify, make it look smaller. That's all it is. So this is a minus here. Okay. Um, Let's now write GM1 and GM2 in their, uh, um, in a different form that we've done in the transconductance lectures. So, uh, hold on. GM can be written as root of 2 mu n times C ox times W over L times ID and the whole root. Okay, writing this for 1 and 2 what do we get? AV equals minus 2 mu n c ox w over l1 id1 over the same thing mu n c ox w over l2 times id2 and this is 1 over 1 plus eta eta or eta whatever it is okay uh, if you look at the circuit here, uh, remember one thing. A 
if there is a current flowing through the circuit it has to start at the power source and end at the ground okay and there's no other path it just has to go like this okay so the current in the circuit is the same it cannot be different there's nowhere else the current is gonna go okay if the current starts here it just has to flow into the ground into the earth okay so the current of m2 that is id2 is equal to the current of m1 that is id1 okay is that clear if it's not clear pause the video go back and watch it again okay so id1 and id2 can go c ox c ox mu n mu n 2 2 can go all right so what we're left with is av equals minus root of w over l1 over the root of w over l2 times 1 over 1 plus eta okay this is a very important result let me take a different color and mark it out there this is a very important result okay what it shows is about the gain of the uh, uh, of the common source amplifier when you're using a diode connected load is you see um, if you forget if you I mean if you neglect the variation uh, of eta with the output voltage if you neglect that for now just look at this term here there is no bias current term there's no voltage term here it's all just device dimensions the width and the length of the transistors one and two so what does this tell us it tells us that the gain of the transist of this amplifier now ha is, is independent independent of what independent of bias currents voltages signal levels whatever you might want to call them all right, all right so what does this mean once you're done with once you're done designing the transistor and if you neglect the effect of eta with the output voltage your gain is going is going to depend only on the device dimensions and and that is that is really good because if you have any varying input signals or output signals your gain is not going to vary so it's going to remain constant which gives us a um, constant output voltage all right but this does come with a lot of pros and cons which we'll discuss over um, over uh, over the course of these lectures but just remember that when you put it in this form it's going to be um, independent of bias currents and voltages and all that okay so let's continue uh, let's let's actually plot the output voltage graph okay so um, let me draw this again for you I would suggest you draw along with me so that you know you get used to it you know when you draw something you immediately know it's a common source amplifier with the diode connected load that's how I want you to uh, learn okay let's take a different color okay this is M2 and this is M1 okay now we're going to study the output voltage characteristics in um, in correspondence to something we've done before. We've done the output characteristics of a common source amplifier with a resistive load. So we'll be studying it together like that, okay? So um, let's plot it first. We have V out against V in, okay? So let's see how it starts all right in the beginning VN starting from zero okay work with me VN starts from zero does this transistor switch on it doesn't until VN touches VTH one okay the V threshold one I'm assuming you're really um, thorough with the basics of MOSFETs before we continue on this lecture okay so before it touches VTH1, this transistor doesn't turn on, right? So there's no conduction. If there's no conduct, there's no conduction. Why? Because this is an open circuit. It, it it does not allow current to pass through it. It's not switched on. So if it's not open, V out is gonna be what? VDD minus V threshold. Look at this transistor as a building. Okay. Topmost floor, middle floor, ground floor. So V out is somewhere here, right? So to get to V out from VDD, you need to spend about VTH 
2, okay, because this is M2. So when this is switched off, it's not on right now, the level of voltage, output voltage, is VDD minus VTH2. I would really appreciate for you to stop this video right now, go back to where I started analyzing this output voltage level, and then come back here. It would be really uh, fun. Okay, so we, we, we have this level of voltage. Till where? At least we know till VTH one is reached okay so when VTH one is reached you're gonna have conduction right because v VTH one is gonna start this transistor and there's gonna be current flowing through it so the voltage will drop again I repeat I hope you're good with the basics of the MOSFETs from before lectures from the previous lectures so V out starts to drop now as this transistor has switched on. Okay, now what is the condition for saturation? As I told you, M2 always remains in saturation. It's a diode connected transistor. Well, M1 is, is in saturation now. So, what is the condition for saturation? VDS of any transistor has got to be greater or equal to VGS minus VTH. All right, for M1 here, uh, for M1 here, what is VDS? Drain is the V out and source is grounded. So VDS is V out. Should be greater than or equal to V in is the VGS minus VTH1, correct? So V in minus VTH1. If this condition is satisfied, your transistor is going to remain in saturation. Okay? But you keep on increasing V in. What happens? At one point of time, this symbol is going to reverse, right? So V out might go lesser than V in minus VTH just because you're keep you're going on increasing V in as you go along the x-axis. So the output characteristic follows a pretty straight line path until we reach a point A where V in goes above what? If VTH is put on this side, V out plus VTH is lesser than or equal to V in. Okay, so let's call this V out plus VTH. When input voltage reaches this value, the the output characteristic becomes nonlinear. We're not we're not interested in what it becomes, but it becomes nonlinear. Okay, so that's what's the output characteristic all about. And um, I hope you understood this. I really uh, like it if you want to watch this video again and get it thorough. Um, so this is the output characteristic of this circuit. We will discuss pros and cons of it. And also, um, I want to discuss um, another circuit where the input transistor is again an NMOS, right? But the load device is now a PMOS diode connected. Uh, I'm sorry. A PMOS diode connector transistor. Not in this lecture, I'm going to continue that in the next lecture. So see you there. Thanks.